Hi, I'm Amy Culp. I'm a sports dietitian at the University of Texas, and I have the privilege of fueling the Longhorns. I'm here today with Jeff Saracini. He's my culinary nutrition intern for the fall, and I gave Jeff the task of coming up with some quick and easy snacks for you to put together at home, and really how easy it can be for you to put together the something very nutritious and yet very delicious, right? You made them very delicious as well. As an athlete, you probably know that you have to have snacks as part of your fueling plan. You have to include those throughout the day to make sure that you stay fueled, ready to go for your workout, or as part of your recovery plan. And so what I tell athletes is really to look for three things. You want to have some, a healthy source of carbohydrates, so we'll show you some of examples of healthy carbohydrates. You want a good source of protein, Protein helps you to feel full. And then I also like to look for some color. Color from fruits and from vegetables. Um, I might come also from a little bit of healthy fat. Um, those help to decrease inflammation so that you can heal and recover in between your workouts. All right, Jeff, what are we gonna start with today? So what we're gonna start with here is just a basic, easy protein bar that only has four ingredients. We have some peanut butter, some general milk, or you can use soy milk, almond milk, hemp milk, whatever you have. Okay. We have some just basic protein. This is what we have vanilla right now. Mm -hmm. And so the benefit of adding this protein powder is that it just bumps up that protein content. The peanut butter is going to have a little protein in it, the milk will have a little protein. This really bumps it up significantly more because it's yeah. a concentrated source of protein. I do want to say with protein powders, I talk to the athletes all the time about making sure that you talk to me about which protein powder that you use and we make sure that it doesn't have any banned substances in it that you shouldn't be taking um, and it's from a reputable uh, source. Okay. And here we have some old-fashioned oats. You could also use rolled oats. It's really just the same thing, just a different name. And so your source of carbohydrate are the oats. You're also getting a little bit of carbohydrate from the milk as well. And then how will you put it together? So first things first, you're going to need a mixing bowl, some measuring cups, some measuring spoons. So all things hopefully that, that you have in your pantry or in your, on your shelves already at home. And just a spatula to mix it all together. First, we're just going to take two cups of the oats. So oats are a natural whole grain. People ask me all the time about, you know, what is a whole grain and how do you include them in, their, in your diet. I think oats are a great, great way to include them. They are also gluten free if you um, are gluten intolerant or have celiac disease. Okay, so those are oats, those are carbohydrate. And for our protein, this is four scoops of just basic protein. Okay, so if you like chocolate, you could use chocolate. I, if you do use an unflavored protein powder, what would, what would you do to add some flavor then to the bar? You could, they make flavored milks. They have vanilla milk, chocolate milk you could use, okay. some strawberry. You could also add fruit, yeah. dried fruits, some fresh fruits if you want. Could you add some uh, vanilla extract or yeah, almond extract some, or something like that? If you have like fresh that? vanilla bean, which is a little okay. more, more expensive, mm -hmm. use those sure. or extracts. Okay, great. And next we have our milk, which is just half a cup. Okay. And this is going to kind of hear it all together, right? Help to hold it together a little bit. So um, since it has the dairy in it and since we're not cooking it, the leftover bars will probably need to refrigerate, yes. right? You're not going, if you were to cook this, then you could leave it out on the counter. But if you obviously aren't going to eat all the bars in one sitting, then you'd want to refrigerate that. So sure. if you're walking around with that on campus and have your bar with you, you'll need to make sure that you put it in a cold pack and keep it cold. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have our great peanut butter, so you could also use almond butter. You could really use any kind of nut butter yeah. that you like, right? Mm -hmm. So for the peanut butter, we're going to do three tablespoons. So on measuring for something like this, Jeff, do they need to be exact? Because I don't see you, you know, measuring it off level. Is that something they need to worry about for this? No, this isn't like baking where it's a science and it has to be perfect. Okay. You do a little more peanut butter, a little less peanut butter, more okay. oats. Okay, so with cooking versus <clears throat> baking, you have a little bit of flexibility there. Correct. Okay. Now we're just going to mix it all together until it comes together almost like a pancake batter. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit chunky then, huh? Correct. Okay. And if it is too dry, all you have to do is just add some more milk. Okay. Another thing I like to do is just skip the whole spatula step if you have gloves. Or clean hands and just yes. get in there. That's yeah. what I was just going to say is sometimes your hands are your best tools in the kitchen because you can really feel what's going on and you might be able to feel if you need a little bit more liquid in there or not or feel it if that texture is correct. As you can see here, it's come together like yeah. a nice ball. 
Beautiful. Now we're just going to form Very into cool. our bar shape. Okay. First, we're just going to take some normal pan spray, some non-stick spray works perfect. Just okay. lightly spray it. And so what's the point of the saran wrap here? The saran wrap allows me to form it okay. into the shape that I want, okay. but also keeping it covered and so nothing in the fridge can get to it. Okay, great. So we're just going to fold one edge over, push it down. You just want to even, out, even it out towards the edges. Okay. And so here it is. You can obviously see it's a little pliable. Mm -hmm. You want to let this sit in the fridge for at least an hour, two or more would be best. Okay. Jeff made this ahead of time so that we could see what the finished product looks so like. This one set up overnight. I made this yesterday. Yep. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and open this up. And so depending on what your dietary needs are, you can make them bigger or smaller. If you cut them into six bars, as you're about to do here, um, we calculated out that it comes out to about 200 to 250 calories and at least 20 grams of protein per bar. Okay. And so that's a great, actually, kind of a recovery meal or a recovery snack that you could have. So now we're just going to cut these up. I'll cut this one into six pieces, just going to half it. And we have our, our homemade sport bar. Homemade four ingredient bar. Homemade four ingredient bar and very inexpensive too, especially because you're going to use all these ingredients for other things as well. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks so much. No